is James Overton. I'm sure most of you know that. Um, this is my son, James, also James Overton, James Overton Jr., Jimmy Overton. Uh, he'll be assisting me and uh, probably teaching uh, some of the techniques that will be demonstrating and certainly being uh, going around helping you guys. Uh, Jimmy has an invaluable uh, degree of experience in uh, grappling competition, uh, in judo, and wrestling, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So having him here is a, is a great uh, is a great asset to our seminar, and certainly brings me a lot of pride. Uh, I'm wearing black. He's wearing white, just so things show up a little better on the uh, on the uh, on the tape, which will, as I stated in the seminar description, will be available to all of you. Uh, for a phenomenal, nominal fee. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. The first, the first series of techniques uh, might surprise you, uh, especially if you've had some. I know some of you have had some judo backgrounds. So it might surprise you as to one going into these particular type of techniques. You're not going to see the actual uh, turning and uh, hip loading and throwing techniques until a little later. The reason for that is, despite the fact that we're wearing a gi, uh, a lot of our techniques are, are, are geared towards grappling in general. So they are, a lot of the techniques we're going to be teaching are going to be techniques that can be employed with a uniform, with a gi, with some kind of garments, as well as without garments. And right now, uh, one of the, when I teach introductory grappling in, at the, at here in class, or whenever I taught it, one of the first techniques that I've taught it's always been the double leg takedown. It's called uh, in judo morote gary, or to mean double gary meaning reap. Okay. But before we get to that, I want to uh, start you guys off with some drills uh, pertaining to the subtle technique of shoots. Okay. You see a lot of people when they want to execute this technique or, or any kind of pickup technique, they bend at the waist and they charge forward. Okay. We're not going to do that here. We don't like that. All right. You'll see later when we do the counter to the double leg to the Morotegari, you'll see why. When you actually bend at the waist, it's much easier to, to counter you than if you do it properly. So we're going to focus on the proper execution of a shoot. And that, I'm going to exaggerate the motion a little bit because in the, in the execution during a, a combat situation, it's a little bit more fluid. But I want you to focus on, first of all, my stance. Okay. The weight of my the, the weight of my feet uh, the weight of my body are on the balls of my feet. Back heel is up. Okay, notice the back heel is up off the mat because that's what's going to propel me forward. First thing I'm going to do is drop my level. Okay, so it's just like a fighting stance, but I drop my level, and from here I I spring forward. I spring forward and I bring my back leg with me. I don't do I don't do this because then I have no no drive. Right, I need. I need to bring my back leg with me so that I actually can engage it either in the combined motion of lifting as well as pushing my opponent forward, or the, uh, the action, the rotation of the sphere. I'm going to talk a lot about spheres rotating here. Okay, so first of all, what you're going to do is with your partners, you're going to start by dropping your level and just shooting forward and back. So switch, okay, back and forth, dropping. Come back here, drop. Here, you notice how I'm inserting. Okay, there'll be other times when we're inserting on the outside, right? But the main principles are the same. We drop our level, level we try to minimize bending at the waist by dropping here, knees, and coming in. Okay, so back and forth, once again, in, out, in. Changing, changing leads. Okay, okay so let's uh, let's cut. Okay, good job, everyone. Good job. Now we're going to continue uh, with the next part of this of this drill. And you're actually going to be taking somebody down. Now there's a when we're done filming, you can come so you can come up and use a crash pad here to get some people on that side of the altar. As you can see, you have a crash pad down there. So, um, and you actually, for this part, what we're going to do, you don't really need the crash pad, so you can use the matted areas, but uh, later you're definitely going to need So here, you've, you've already, you've dropped down, okay, you've inserted, right? Now from here, this is the, 
what's called the Gary part of the technique. In other words, the, the reaping part. Okay? From this position, from this position where I've inserted nicely and deeply, I'm pushing with my shoulder and I'm going to scoop with my hands. And notice I'm not grabbing the garment. This is this I mean, it can be effective if you get a nice, nice hole and a person has nice baggy pants for you to grip. But it's not something even in even in a, a garment oriented art like judo, it's not something that you really want to rely on. You want to grab them behind the person's knees. Okay? Cup your hands behind their knees, okay? Pushing with your shoulder and your head. And watch this. I'm going to do this rather slowly, but here it is. Okay, bang. Right? Actually, I did it with a little bit of lift. Um, if you can just do it straight in, like just kind of pushing and tossing. Right? Now, what are the principles behind this movement? For certainly the vast majority of your stand up grappling techniques, and certainly, and also the ones on the ground. You know, with the exception of, uh, there are some exceptions, but for most of your techniques, you're looking at a dynamic sphere. Okay? Grappling cannot take place, unlike high boxing or, or boxing, grappling cannot take place when two bodies are separated at a distance. Okay? Grappling takes place when the two bodies combine into one. All right? First thing. Second thing, in order to use any degree of technique, you have to be able to, you have to rotate these bodies that are now connected to one as a sphere, a sphere rotating. So from here, following along the, this technique that we're, we're building on, I insert, I'm here, okay, now we're one body. Okay, as I'm going to rotate them as a sphere, okay, this is the axis of, of rotation of this sphere. Okay? I'm pushing it this way and then scooping this way. So for an instant, both of us are actually rotating. You will see that I'm not static here. I'm actually pushing, right? Okay. I insert, I'm here, bang. Okay? I'm actually pushing and pulling. So both of us are actually rotating along the combined axis of rotation of our, of our bodies in one sphere. Then I disengage. Or I could continue, I could continue passing the guard or engaging in a leg lock or something of that nature uh, if I wished. Or just stomp on this private you know, depending on what the uh, what the encounter is all about. Okay? So always keep in mind the sphere. Look for the sphere. Okay? The two bodies rotate. Alright, so this is what you're gonna practice. Practice from here, just inserting, dropping, here, picking up just a little bit. This is not a power move, okay? Just a little bit, but it's more of a bang, okay? That quick rotation, and then disengage. Stay upright, okay? From here, you have options. Afterwards, we're going to practice this related technique in which we're not caught between the opponent's uh, so-called guard, okay? Not that this is a, a tremendous problem. Again, I can do leg lock. I can stop depending on what you know, what's the nature of the you know, what are the rules. And it's a street fight. Bang ends pretty quickly. Okay, so let's work on that. Okay, guys, looking good, looking good. All right, let's build on this. Now, what I did before was I just from here. You notice I didn't really get much elevation. Okay, it didn't really get much elevation. I popped the sphere up a little bit by lifting, and then I just kind of tugged and pushed, rotating like this. But uh, we want to cause a little bit more damage to our opponent. Okay? At least we want to have that option. So from here, okay, from here I'm going to insert, just insert, and from here I'm going to pick up. Now again, this is not a power move, despite the fact that it seems that way. Okay? Usually. I usually bring my daughter 110 pounds to pick me up 200 pounds to demonstrate this, but she's on camera right now. Camera, so that's not gonna, not gonna work. But trust me on this. Okay, you can. When you'll you'll realize this when you actually practice and have the smaller people pick up the larger people by 
maintaining my back straight. I lift with my legs. Okay. Now from here, here are your options. From here you can be uh, pleasant and docile, dump your opponent with this. You can be less pleasant and far less docile and actually jump up and crash down on your opponent, which is uh, was my favorite way of dealing with this in competition. Uh, you actually drive your, from here, you drive your sternum into your opponent's, uh, sorry, your shoulder into your opponent's sternum on the way down. This is a very effective street technique in that, you know, on the street you don't have a nice crash mat, landing pad, so you just make your opponent into your landing pad. Just boom, land on. Uh, however, in training, you're probably not going to make many friends doing this on a regular basis. So I strongly suggest that you just practice picking up, okay, and just, just dropping. Just practice the pickup. In fact, for a drill, what I'd like you to do is when a person reaches, you reach, you're going to parry their hands. Okay, so this can be done. This can be done at the beginning of an encounter. Someone tries to grab you. You parry your hands. You pick up. Okay? You just put them down. Right? Or the person uh, can be reaching for help. Parry up. Pick up. And drop. Okay? We'll be working on variations of that. Alright. Let's get busy. Okay. Now we're going to work on a variation of this, of this technique in which you're actually going to have to use the crash pads a little bit okay, because I want you to, to experience what it's like to dump your opponent a little bit. Uh, you always have the option of landing on your opponent in a grappling, in a grappling uh, situation in order to close the gap and immediately transition into groundwork or you can just dump them and move away, run away or engage uh, other opponents if you have to. Okay, the idea that some people have that Grappling is limited to ground work, or is primarily ground work, is a fallacy. Okay? One of the things I want to do is, is change everyone's minds about this, and understand that grappling involves as much stand-up work and throwing and not being thrown as, as uh, mat work or ground work. Okay, so here's a variation. Okay? So I'm here, I've dropped, I've inserted, I pick up, but this time, rather than spreading his legs and tossing him this way. What I'm going to do is, is clear, clear his legs and toss him. So it's a rotation. Okay, here, bang, up. Now see, I rotate him like this to the side. Now from here, I could fall on him, just the same, or just pleasantly dump him. Now what, have I, what I've accomplished here is, What I've accomplished, let me just do it over now. What I've accomplished is I've cleared his guard, okay, at the same time as I've lifted him. So I've actually transitioned into a more favorable position to continue on the ground by employing this kind of switch. I call it a Yoko um, Morotegari, a side Morotegari. So I'm here, bang, drop, I'm up. Okay, I've just come down lightly to avoid hanging on my partner, but now here I'm ready for, uh, I'm ready for ground work. Okay, so grab, a, grab the, uh, the crash mat, you can come up here, use this one, take turns, but experience that. And notice, and I know a lot of you are already pointing this out, with your back straight, lifting with your legs, you can get to know your opponent feels a lot lighter than if you bend at the back. Hey, technique. Let's go. Okay, so we taught you an offensive technique. Now we're going to teach you a counter or a defensive. We're going to go to a few counters against this against this move. The first one we're going to work on is what's known as the sprawl. Okay. Now here we're going to emphasize why it's so important not bend at the waist and shoot in. Why it's so important to keep your, your back relatively erect as you make your entry, dropping your butt. Okay, well the first time, first let me let me demonstrate what the sprawl is all about. All 
right? I'm here, I'm just standing, these shoes in, go ahead, just, uh, just do, uh, do it properly. Just going to show you. These shoes in, I move my, my legs back out of the way, I put pressure on him, I try to get my hips out, okay? Basic, basic move. We're going to elaborate on that a little bit more. Okay. Watch what happens if he bends his back. I'm just going to bend his back. Okay. Not only do I need to sprawl less, but in this kind of action, okay, it's much easier to counter him. And with with the choke, the guillotine here. Okay. So many counters I can do. Right. Much easier to counter. Him. Same amount of motion. He's going to shoot in with his leg properly. Watch what happens. If I don't sprawl enough, he catches me. Okay. Um, bring your hips forward. Okay. Notice how much closer he is. Now bring your hips way back. And bend at the waist. Okay. The distance between his hips and my center of gravity marks the degree to which he doesn't have control. Let me rephrase that. The closer his hips are to my center of gravity, the more control and penetration he has with this technique. Right? I have to, in order to fend from this, I have to sprawl much further to get away from his, from his arms. Okay? Another reason, um, as Jimmy was mentioning earlier to some of you, is that when people bend their backs, they tend to shoot their arms wide. Now watch what happens if he shoots his arms wide, bending from Okay, I can catch him here. Now from here, okay, from here, watch this counter. I'm going to do this slowly because it involves a neck lock. Right? From here, I turn, I bring him down, and his neck is locked out. Okay? We go take it over. Okay? Here, his neck is locked out. Being very careful because it's very pleasant. Again, you see this from a, see this from a different angle. If he bends at the waist, arms tend to shoot out. It's much easier to defend this way. So I'm here, he shoots out, bang, I catch him here. All right? From here, his own momentum forward is actually going to help me take him down. Push forward, rotate. You come down now carefully, okay? Pressure on the neck. Okay? So, a couple reasons why it's important to drop your level and shoot. Okay. So we've explained that. Let's go over some of the details of the sprawl. He shoots in. He shoots in. Okay, I need to get, I need to get my butt out of dodge. I need to get my hips as far away as possible from his hips, from his center of gravity, from his, from his power area. Okay? In order to keep in order to keep two bodies rather than one colliding into one sphere. I need to shoot my legs out at angles. What this does, let's do it again. Okay, so I'm here. Okay, what this does is it increases, it increases the distance uh, through, through which his hands have to travel in order to try to grab my, my legs. Right now he's got to extend his arms out. He has less power to be able to pull me in. Okay, so two things. Uh, get my hips out of the way, kick my legs out. Third thing that's very important, shoot again, okay, <clears throat> is fall on him. Right? I want to make this almost as a counterattack. My dropping of my chest on his back helps, helps uh, block his momentum forward. Right? Leaving him in a more vulnerable position. Okay, comments? Okay, so what we're going to do is this is, how I, this is how I always emphasize to my students how to practice this. What you're going to do is you're going to stand right in front. Your, your opponent is going to be in a, in a uh, position ready to shoot, nice and crouched. Okay? You're going to have your hands up. All right? Actually, let's start off with your hands on your lips. Let's not get too cocky. All right, so your hands are going to be down, your opponent's going to shoot, and you're going to sprawl. Go ahead. Okay, and down. Bang. Okay, get your hips out of the way, fall on your opponent, kick your legs back. When you get a little bit better at this, hands up, here, I'm coming closer, this is closer. Go ahead, shoot, boom, okay, 
and down. Of course, I'm not completely out of danger here, um, because what he's about to do is spin this way, right? Come out like this, but then that's. But we're. <laughs> I'm a lot better off than I would have been had he caught me. Uh, believe me. Okay. All right, guys. Let's do this. Okay, guys. We're back to do this. Um, we're gonna do uh, uh, another. Uh, Defensive maneuver, it's not really counter, it's a defensive maneuver against the chute. And Jimmy's going to demonstrate this one. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to shoot, okay, and he's going to pivot and turn on his hands to escape the maneuver. Now, let me just talk a little bit about this, and we're going to do it a little bit more fluidly. Right. First thing is, as I pick him up, my intention is to slam him on his back. All right? Now, there is a possibility, well, there's a, a split instant in which he's, by landing on his hands, his back is to me. But it's kind of a trade off. Um, would you rather have your back, and perhaps the back of your head, hit the pavement? Or would you rather try to spin out, plant your hands, and then rotate as he did? I mean, that's, I think it's a, you know, it's, once you're up in the air, uh, <laughs> your, 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 your options are rather limited. So this is better, in my opinion, than getting my, the back of my head and my back slammed into the pavement. So, okay, so I'm here, boom, shoot my head, and he's down, escapes. All right? Now, there's some subtleties of this um, Jimmy's going to comment on. Okay? Well, the two, well, I guess there are three important points, but the two most important things would be um, creating space. Like, as he shoots at I have to get my hips away are the most important thing, but if he's too far in, leaning my back and turning um, should be enough. But if, it, if I get my hips out, it's, it's a lot better. And um, the most important thing, I would say, the one most important thing, is when I land on the ground, to turn and face him as, as quickly as possible. So I'm landing on my hands and then spinning away because I don't want him on my back. And if he comes at me, I'm a lot better um, disposed to deal with whatever he's doing. You're in a lot better position than you were an instant fraction of a right. second. And it, um, the higher he lifts you, the harder it is to, to do. Um, the farther he goes on with the technique, I guess is the easiest thing to say. So. Um, whichever leg, it's easiest probably if he's, uh, if he's shooting in right side. If you can get this leg in, your left leg, in between his legs, it, it helps you. Can you see that to the camera? Mm -hmm. so this leg. Yeah, as he shoots in. If I can get this leg in, it helps me create space, one, and two, it helps me, helps me turn out, and it stops him from lifting. Well, it doesn't stop him, but it makes it harder. It makes it harder. It makes it a lot harder for him to lift. It's better to get the near leg in if he's shooting in right side. His lead leg, I want to trap, trap his lead leg. But if I can't, this leg, well, get any leg you can in. But so, first option, and the second option. Okay, so you want to get a leg in, braced your shin, braced against the inside of my of my entry leg. Let's do that one more time. In this angle. And notice that he's basically initiated his escape before I have a good handle on the pickup. Right? As he said, the higher he is up in the air, so let me just kind of pick you up. First, the higher he is up in the air, the more difficult this becomes. <laughs> the more of an acrobat he actually has to be to keep from getting slammed on the map. Okay. All right, more comments? Um, obviously, uh, your first option is to sprawl, and this is, in most cases, the last ditch um, resort. Okay, well, let's play with this a little bit, and we've got uh, some other options we're, gonna, we're going to explore. Okay, let's get going. Okay, see, we all had fun with that. I know some of you were a little intimidated by the, uh, the acrobatics that require uh, a certain degree of feline agility. 
uh, in order to perform. Uh, let's do a little bit, uh, let's do a couple of other things um, that some of us less acrobatically inclined um, can engage in. So from here, and again I'm going to emphasize some of the differences between when someone, when the opponent, your, your attacker, performs a proper shoot versus a football tackle. Okay, so this particular defense, uh, counter, now we're actually, this is actually a counter to this move. So this particular counter uh, in, in judo, in Japanese, is called, uh, is called uh, sumigaeshi, or sumigaesh, uh, meaning uh, corner counter. Okay, you'll see why in a moment. Uh, I'm going to teach this my style, which is a little bit different, and I may or may not uh, elaborate on the differences between how I do it versus classical, uh, classical judo. So I'm here, minding my own business, and all of a sudden I get shot. Okay, so here, I'm going to break down and do this slowly first, and then do it, uh, do it quickly. So, um, give me poor form. Alright, so this is a football tackle. Um, in a bar or whatever situation, he, he charges, okay, and I barely get a chance to sprawl, all right, so from here, I'm going to bend my body on him, if I can, wrap my hands around, grab something, or even just hug his body, all right, let's move back, let's go, let's do this, okay, so here, go ahead, so here, you shoot, yeah, so go ahead, boom, from here, I'm going to, using his momentum, because he's still driving through to take me back, I'm going to sit down, okay, toss him over and roll. Again, we're one sphere, okay, all right, two bodies, you're going to be sick of hearing this, but two bodies become one sphere because he's entered into my space, grabbed onto me, and has a certain amount of, uh, of angular momentum in his motion, right? So he shoots him again, one more time, okay, bang, and over, not on the mount, things change, bang, okay? Now, let me break this down, I see go a little, you can go a little faster, okay? it doesn't really matter, the faster he comes in, it's like uh, Joe Lewis said, the harder they come, the harder they fall, the faster he comes, the harder he's going to fall, hence it reticence to actually train wreck into me. So, all right, a um, couple things. He's going to shoot in. If I can, go ahead, just do a football tag. If I can, I'm going to sprawl out a little bit. Always, right? Because it gives me a certain degree of control. Okay? And it should be instinctive. It should be instinctive to, as soon as someone's coming down there, to, to perform some degree of sprawling action. And here's the case where I sprawl a little bit, he charges, I sprawl a little bit, and he's still coming through. Now notice where his leg is. Sorry, notice where my leg is, where his arm is. It's wrapped around this leg, okay? Now this leg, since he's pulling it forward, I'm just going to go with that motion. I'm going to insert this leg. I, I insert it on the inside of this thigh, okay? Classical uh, judo would place it on the out. Uh, on the uh, inside of this thigh. Okay, the reason why this leg there, I insert it on, you stand up, just keep your foot there. I insert it on the inside of this thigh is because when people uh, tend to, to shoot, they tend to insert one leg, and there's a lead leg that enters. Okay, so, and more so often than not, it's the right leg, so we're in a kind of like right leg to right leg situation. It's a little easier for me to get this. That's one of the reasons. Another reason has to do with the rotation and where I wind up, and in case I mess up, I, uh, I don't want my opponent on top of me and running over to the side. I might illustrate that in a moment. So let's go back. He's, again, he's doing a crappy shoot. He's doing a football tackle, okay, which makes my defense, my counter, a lot easier. I'll show you in a minute what happens when he does a proper shoot and how much more difficult it becomes. Still possible, but much more difficult. So again, he does a football tackle over. Right? I can hold on to this, right? Like uh, neck lock, and just simply sit in the mount. Okay? The motion, okay. the motion that I'm using is simply, I can try to get a little bit of a sprawl, 
kind of stop the momentum and so I can control the motion backwards uh, because maybe he's just coming too fast, right? And he might be just charging right through, coming a little too fast. I don't have time to actually set myself physically and mentally for that roll. So I may want to like stop a little bit, but the motion is I sit down, and as I sit down, again, hugging his back, arms around, arms around, his back, this leg shoots up on the inside of his of his uh, corresponding thigh, right to right, okay? And I sit back and I kick this out. At the same time, his own momentum, as I kick this out, his own momentum helps me come over into a dominant position, right? One more time, so good for this side. One more time, I'm going to try to break it down. I, I break a little bit. This time, I caught his neck. Okay, my arm isn't around here. I caught his neck. Be careful with this when you practice. All right? That's why I'm, oh, I'm pointing this out. Be very careful with this. Effective on the street, but what happens if I catch his neck? Instead of this, is as we come over, Okay, see where his head winds up? Wrapped up through here. If I'm not careful, I'm not cautious, I follow through the momentum, okay, I can damage his neck on the way up. So, I'm pointing it out so that you are aware that it's an option. Don't do this by mistake and hurt your opponent, okay? We've all signed waivers, but this still is the state of California. Alright, so again, one more time from this section, this thing, this angle, I'm here, and I'm and I'm over. Okay, comments? Okay, get busy. Okay, now as I mentioned uh, earlier, you guys have, well, you guys have practiced when your opponent's actually done football kind of tackle, bending at the waist, and all that ugly stuff. Right? Now we're going to practice, see what happens when um, your opponent does a proper shoot. So you get here, your opponent shoots, and then you're going to try to sprawl. Look at how much more difficult the situation becomes. Okay? Look how much more difficult the situation becomes. Here, you can still execute this technique, but <laughs> you better be quicker on your sprawl. All right? This is definitely a situation in which you have to sprawl in order to, to, in order to break his his vertical stance. Okay, shoot, shoot. Okay, and he shoots. And I try to do this technique from here. I'm gonna land on my back. I'm gonna land on my back. There's no two ways about it. Okay? Versus bring your bring your hips up. Okay, like this. Now I have enough room. Now I have enough room to sit down. And as I sit down, watch what happens to his body as I as I sit down and place myself. As I sit down, okay. He wants to roll forward. All right, stand up again. Okay, so bend at the waist. Bend at the waist. If he bends at the waist like this, and I come in again with one body, my dropping motion, what it does is it it uh, applies a certain degree of angular momentum into his into his body. Okay, we both roll over. If he does a proper shoot, however, there's no room for that. There's no room for that. If I try to drop, I'm just helping him with the move. So, what you have to do here, you definitely have to sprawl, right? Go ahead, shoot. You can still perform the technique, but you have to sprawl. Now that, I'm, that I've given myself a little bit of room, okay, and broken his stance a little bit, now I, I can do, do the technique. Okay, and back up. Come over here, you know, this way. Okay, let's just demonstrate it right quick. I want you guys to practice and see the difference and see how important it is to shoot properly. So go ahead. He shoots. I sprawl a little bit. I come down. Okay. And I'm over. Alright? Let's practice that. Alright. Now, um, we do another technique. It's called... Uh, Tawari Gaeshi, Tawari Gaesh. 
uh, rice bag reversal. Rice bag reversal. Okay. Um, this technique is very similar to the previous one, except for rather than shooting my leg up on the inside of your opponent's thigh, and again, in a classical sumi gaish, you can go on this side. My style, I always go on this side. And let me just demonstrate why uh, a little bit. Uh, judo is is very much a uh, a sport of grips, in the sense that grips it's kind of a, a digression. But grips afford certain opportunities to enter into into grappling techniques. Uh, again, what I'm showing here now so far, uh, there are really no grips involved. So it's not all about grips, but grips are important. So, for example, if I take a what's called an obitori, a uh, a belt grip, top, okay, uh, this is a, a very good position to execute the sumi gaish because from here my foot is right, and this is why I do it this way, with my foot on the inside as opposed to that side, because from here, see, my foot is is already directly lined up with this inner thigh. So when I roll him, okay, I'm nice and neatly in position to execute the technique. So that's one of the reasons why um, I developed that particular way of, of doing this technique. Okay, now back to what I want to demonstrate. Um, to our gash. All right, so the opponent's going to shoot again. Football tackle, they're going to do proper shoot. Okay, so by now you should be sold on the difference. Okay, so in the football tackle. He comes in, I sprawl a little bit, but my foot's too far out. Okay, it'd be too awkward for me from here to try to get my foot on the inside. Right? So from here, I'm still going to follow the principle of a sphere. Two bodies have become one. Right? He's pushing forward by dropping my hips. I'm imparting a certain degree of angular momentum. So he's going to spin. This time I'm just going to shoot my leg out and rotate him over my body. So I'm here. Now, from here, rather than go over top of him, I'm more in a side mount position. Notice where my arm is. I'm going to slide underneath the mount. I have control. If I want to slip into the mount, I'm here. See that again? This side, okay, he tackles, and I'm here. Okay, comments? Okay, so, actually, you know, let me just show this, uh, what happens if the person does a proper shoot, he comes in, again, you had better sprawl, but you're actually in a little better position than trying to do this technique than the previous one. So do the uh, Tawari Gaesh rather than the Sumi Gaesh because of where your foot is on the outside. Okay? So even with a little bit of a sprawl, I can now spring into action, come over top, and slide for the control, transitioning into groundwork. Okay? Or a hold down okay, with the neck, neck, neck crank. Okay. Pumps. No. All right, just get busy, guys. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna move on uh, away from the uh, the double leg and the and the uh, the reversals. Um, we're gonna move on to a technique that uh, Tani Toshi Valley Drop. No, Valley Drop. Valley Drop. That's correct. All right. The entry from this is stand on stand facing. Okay. The entry from this is. Well, we're going to do it as an attack. It can also be done as a defensive maneuver, and I'm going to explain both. So from here, what I'm going to do is the same kind of motion, drop my hips, bend the, knee, bend the knees, okay? This time I'm going to shoot them to the side, right? Now from here, there are people that do a double leg from here. So they pick up here, and then they sweep back, right? So that's, a, that's another, I'm just going to, it's another, uh, variation on this entry, you can go in here, or you can just come around, pick up, and toss, right? But <clears throat> from my perspective, once I'm over here, 
I have the advantage, a couple of advantages. Number one, I've outflanked my opponent. Number two, it's always important to have your hips lower than your opponent when you're, when you're going to execute the attack, right? Because with your hips lower than your opponent, you're the one that gets to drive which way or have more influence uh, in terms of which way the sphere is going to go. Now that's not always the case because there are techniques that if I sit around and camp here, he can turn and do a chimata and I'm going to go flying. Right, so I don't want to camp here. So again, I'm going to come in, I drop, instead of inserting inside, I'm going to come around here. Okay, it doesn't really matter what I do with this, this arm over here, if I put it behind or in between, I will rotate in a minute. What I'm going to do is drop this leg behind both of his heels and take him down. Right? Now it's a little less explosive than it actually would be. Let's move over a little bit. Okay. Describing the mechanics of it, it's a rotation this way. Okay. So as I go over here, I come in to the side, and now I drop. And I'm up for a mount. Okay. Not a spectacular pickup technique but effective nonetheless, getting your opponent to the ground and getting the upper hand. Now I said this can be done as a counter if I'm over here, okay, engaged, and he does, uh, he attempts to do a hip throw, okay, go ahead, he rotates, okay, I move with him and block his rotation or sort of follow his rotation and, and keep him from, prevent him from completing the technique. Now I'm in the perfect position to do my Tandy Toshi and simply dropping my hips, extending the leg out, and rotating. So I'm just going to do that slowly here and, and into mat work, transition. Okay, let me do it again. Now I'm going to go to execute the technique from here to here. Bang! 
Okay, drop. Notice when I've got the uh, ankle lock just waiting. All right? Okay, one more time. Okay, subtleties here is I have to break my opponent's balance as I step in at the diagonal, loading all of his weight on that foot. That's what helps trap that knee in position. At the same time, this hand extends in to catch. Now, as you can see, I can almost make him fall just by pushing it. And I don't really have to, uh, to pull that much. Of course, the technique is, is, is completed with a push-pull action, rotating, again, rotating the sphere. Here, I'm grabbing the lapel. I can just as easily grab the, um, grab the, uh, the elbow part of the jacket as I make my entry, which in some senses might be more effective. You, you actually um, you a little slightly different effect on, on, your, on your opponent's balance. But here, grabbing the lapel, I'm just going to this grabbing the lapel, I feel stronger. Typically, I have a better grip from here. Okay, the advantage grabbing here is you tend to neutralize that arm a little bit. Okay, so one more time. I'm here, I grab the lapel, grab the elbow, doesn't matter. Make my grab, I insert deep in, and down. And again, I could be ready for the ankle lock. Okay, so guys have the crash pads around. Let's play with this. Alright everyone, uh, we're going to work on a single leg takedown. The mechanics are pretty much the same as the double leg. You uh, have to change levels first and shoot in and keep your back straight. Um, square, square. But, um, whereas with the double leg, we were inserting in the middle this time. Um, we'll pick a leg if we're going to do it right side. Um, we're going to come the outside of his left leg. So we're following the general theme of, of coming to the outside. Yep. If we're doing the left side. Some important points. Okay, now this, when I shoot in, I'm coming, if everyone can see my foot position, um, I'm standing to the side of him. Now, a few important points is uh, how you grip your hands. Um, gripping like this with the uh, thumb through the, between the index and the middle finger. And the the hand that comes around, so I'm doing the right side with my right hand, it's gripping over top. This is the right way to do it, this is the wrong way to do it. The reason being that if I grip this way with my left hand over top, he can reach off and it's easier for him to pluck. And now, whereas I can still finish by gripping, it's just, that's a different technique. And we don't, if, if we can, well, that's more advanced, so. If we can finish it, finish, finish them off with one technique rather than going to more, it's better. Okay, so finish the position is important. Pinch our knees together, keeping our legs bent. Our head is our head is up, controlling him, so that if I wanted to break his balance just with my head, it's kind of in the middle of his chest. I can just by leaning my head. Back. My back's bent at about 45. I'm not bent over. My back is straight. If I'm bent over, you can push my head down, and if he sprawls out, absolutely not. I'm in a horrible position. So, now just go over the basic points, change levels, shoot in. The outside hand has to be facing palm up. Grip with your thumb between your index and middle fingers. Lift. Head in between, and now the, the finish we're going to do is we're going to step back with our outside leg, pull his leg across us, and come across for the double. And finish in any way you like. We've already done over that. Okay, you want to do that uh, just one more time? Just the entry, clearing the leg smoothly so they can see it. Guys, gather around. So. Yeah. Good leg. Okay. I'm in position. Grab the leg. Bring it back in. 
So that I could lift in here. I can do anything with them. I'm yeah. scary. Okay, let's get busy. Okay, and I know you all had fun with that. So we're going to continue on that theme and incorporate this last uh, technique on the single leg uh, pick with uh, the technique we did prior to this, which is the Tanya Toshi. So from here, okay, I perform my entry, I shoot in, I come around here, head up, squeezing the leg, all as, as Jimmy had mentioned before. Now, rather than clearing the leg and going on the inside, as he did, what we're going to do is clear the leg and go on the outside. And from here, I'm just simply going to do the uh, Tanya Toshi Valley Drop, put this, this foot behind his heel, I'll hop over a little bit back. Okay. This behind his heel, behind his, as I drop. Okay, then drop it over, cross. Um, do that again, and then on the other side, just so they can see. The technique's a little different when you, uh, Okay, so from here, from here I'm going to shoot in, bang, up, squeeze the leg, get the hand over the top, like you said. This clears the outside, sorry, behind the leg, and from here I'm going to drop carefully because I don't have a crash pad now. But here, boom. Now, I wouldn't stay in this position, I had immediately come up for the side mount. All right, one more time. Okay, but slowly so you can see principles. Rather than shooting in, I'm coming around here. Boom, up, grip, clear, down, and over. Okay, let's play with that a little bit.